Hello friends, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. I am here with another exciting concept in Sisha. As you know, Sisha was first released in Jan 2002 and since then it has existed and has become a popular programming language. On 9th November 2021, Csub 10 is released along with .NET 6. There are many new features got added in this release. But in this video, we are going to look into top 5 features of Csub 10. Before we get started, just a quick reminder to subscribe my channel, hit the red button and don't forget to click on the little bell icon. That way you will be notified every time I upload a new video. Okay, without any further delay, let's get started. So today's topic is CSAP 10 top 5 new features. Here I will talk about global using directives and implicit global using directives second we will look at what is file scope namespace and how we can use it in a program third i will explain about what is extended property pattern and what's the benefit of using it next we will look into the null parameter checking what it is and how it helps developers while writing a program finally we will see how initialization and assignments are done in same destruction using c sub 10 so Let's dive into it one by one. Global using directive in C sub 10. What is global using directives? Global using directive help us to arrange common namespaces in one place and it would get applied at compile time at project level. In a way, it eliminates the vertical waste. Let's understand it from the example. So before C sub, we used to import namespaces at top for each class file. If you see, we have added namespaces like using dot system, using system dot collection dot generic, and so on, so that we can utilize it throughout the program. Here, if you notice, we have written console dot write line. Console class, we are able to use it because we have imported system namespaces at top, right? If it is not added, we can't use it. So that's the way we used to write namespaces at top and use throughout the program using earlier version of CSA. But now with C sub 10, we have flexibility to remove all the namespaces from program.cs file and keep it in separate files, say using.cs. Here, if you just notice, we have added global keyword before every namespaces. So it becomes global using system, global using system.collection.generic, and so on. We can even write global using with namespaces alias qualifier. Right? So you must be thinking what the benefit we are getting out of the global using directives, right? The first benefits you can consider is there is now one central location for common namespaces, right? In this case, using.cs. So no need to write namespaces again and again in all program files. So it reduces vertical waste and easier to maintain, right? Second benefit you can count on we could import a specific namespace in a file that is going to be used only in that file. So it makes developer life easy to understand what's the specific functionality that the file is going to keep it, right? So now you must have understood what the global using directive and what the benefit associated with it. Okay, so here we are on Visual Studio. If you see right hand side, there is a project C sub 10 global using them which is nothing but a console application. It has program.cs file. If you see this program.cs file, these are the namespaces we have written at the top so that we can utilize its method and classes throughout our program, okay? So if you notice, I have written this namespaces C sharp 10 global using demo.com because I wanted to use this calculate method, which is defined in this namespace. If you see this calculator.cs class, it is having this namespace c sub 10 global using demo.com. It has this calculate method it, that receives some input and then do some processing and gives the output to the caller method. Okay, so this is the way how we write these namespaces at the top and utilize its method and classes throughout our program. And we write these namespaces in each and every file so that is a vertical vestige right so with the help of c sub 10 we can eliminate this vertical vest how we can do that let's see so for that i'm just going to 
copy it from here okay and remove it now i'm just going to add one new item and item would be our class file so let me give this name to using dot yes okay i'm just going to click add button okay so this file got added in this program i'm just going to remove this content that came by default now i'm just going to put this name as base and i'm just going to simply add global keyword to it okay so global using system similarly let me do it for other namespace as well okay. so global using system dot text global using system dot trading dot task global using c sub global using demo dot com okay so i have added this global keyword to each and every namespaces over here okay so i have added this namespaces at the central location which is nothing but our using dot cs file right so let me remove these common namespaces from calculator.cs class as well. Okay, so I have removed that. Let me save it. Okay. So this using.cs file is having this common namespaces and it will be available throughout our project. So at the project level, we just need to come here and define the common namespace and it will be available e in each and every class. We don't need to add these namespaces individually in each and every class okay so let me save this file let me execute this this output came that says demo global using csop 10 new feature and it just adding two numbers six plus five and giving the output as 11. so our global using concept is working right okay so now next see the other topic implicit global using directive in csap in dotnet 6 mm -hmm. so this is the feature provided in dotnet 6 where it is enabled by default how we can see whether it is enabled or default we can simply go to the project properties then build then we need to go to general and then we would be able to find this implicit global using checkbox if it is checked it means it's enabled if it is unchecked it means it's disabled okay same can be viewed by this project properties implicit using there is a tag it is having the enable value it means it's enabled if it is having disabled value it means it's disabled so this two way we can come and you know change the default behavior if you want to okay so basically implicit global using directive enables us to reduce the repetitive namespace in our source file and it is generated automatically so as a developer we don't need to import common namespaces by our own okay so that's the benefit and it also reduces the vertical bestes file scope namespace in c sub 10 while scope namespace help us to write cleaner code by removing the horizontal and vertical space for namespace declaration. Before C sub 10, we used to write namespace like namespace keyword, then namespace name, then opening curly bracket, and at the end closing curly bracket. It was consuming some space in a code file. With C sub 10, we can simply write namespace keyword, namespace name at at last semicolon. It is equivalent to earlier version of CSA, but it is easier to write and we don't need to worry for missing curly bracket that we used to face in bigger program. Okay, so now move to the next topic. Extended property pattern in C-Sharp 10. It help us to access nested property values in patterns by using a dot token. Let's understand this with the help of example. What does it mean, right? So let's suppose we have two classes, department and imply. Department class has one property location. And imply class has two properties, imply name and department. Department being a class serves here in imply class as property. Before C sub 10, 
we used to write to access the nested property in pattern like this if imply is imply curly bracket department colon again curly bracket location colon and the value of that location right but with c sub 10 we write imply is imply department dot location and the value of the location here we accessing the nesting property in pattern using the dot token right it's so it's easier in writing and also help us to get null parameter checking in c sub 10 null parameter checking enable us to check whether a specific parameter of the function is null or not if it is null, it automatically throws argument null exception. Before C sub 10, let's see how we use to write the code, right? Let's suppose there is a function, some function, and it accepts input parameter as a, a string str username. So before using this input parameter, we need to check whether that value is null or not. So how we use to write, we just need to write if str username equal equal null and if it is the null value then we are throwing the exception argument null exception name of str username right so this is the way we used to write before c sub 10 but with c sub 10 again there is the same function some function right so it is also accepting str username as an input parameter and here we are not checking with the if condition we just going to use this throw if null method right and if str username is null then it will automatically throw the argument null except yeah so that is the beauty of the null parameter checking in c sharp 10. Initialization and assignment in same destruction in C sub 10. C sub 10 enables us to initialize and assign in same destruction. In earlier version of C sub, it was restricted. That is, a destruction could assign all values to existing variable or initialize newly declared variables. What does it mean? Let's understand this with the help of example. Before C sub 10, we used to initialize int x int y is equal to coordinate assignment like this int x1 is equal to 0 int y1 is equal to 0 x1 y1 is equal to coordinate right with c sub we can write int x is equal to 0 initialization assignment in the same restriction like this x int y is equal to coordinate right so with c sub 10 we can write initialization and assignment in the same restriction so c sub remove the restriction in c sub 10 right okay so now with this it brings me to end of my session to sum up we looked at c sub 10 top five new features like global using directives and implicit global using directives and how to enable and disable it then we saw what file scope name spaces and how to use it then we saw what extended property patterns and and how we can easily do nested property check later we saw a new way of null parameter checking and finally we went through how to initialize and assign variable in the same destruction so if you like this video hit the like button share it with your friends and colleagues subscribe to my channel if you haven't done already thank you i see you in the next video